hello everyone so today uh, we are going to talk about the third type of post transcriptional modifications which is known as um, RNA splicing this is a pre mRNA molecule uh, what we see here is that we have a 5 prime cap and we have a poly A tail at the 3 prime end um, and then uh, we have the uh, the exons which are the coding parts of the DNA and in between them we have got the non-coding parts non-coding parts of the mRNA molecule so exons are the coding parts of the uh, mRNA molecule and introns are the non-coding parts of the mRNA molecule and we need to remove or kick out these intron, uh, introns from the mRNA molecule and we need to put together these exons in order to constitute what we call a mature mRNA molecule so um, uh, the joining together or putting together of the ends of the two ends is basically what we call splicing which is generally confused with uh, removal it's not removal splicing means putting the two ends together so what we are going to do in RNA splicing is that we are going to put the two exons together we are going to join them together and that would constitute a coding a continuous coding uh, segment uh, in addition to that, um, the mRNA molecule, the mature mRNA molecule, uh, would still contain the 5' prime cap and the 3' prime poly A tail, along with the 5' prime UTR, the untranslated region, which is also known as the leader sequence, as well as the 3' prime UTR, which is also known as the uh, trailer sequence. So uh, they are known as UTRs, the untranslated regions, because uh, they do not get translated they are not part of the uh, coding segment but uh, it does not mean that there's nothing in there so um, like the 5 prime UTR helps in capping uh, 3 prime UTR helps in polyadenylation and after the mRNA has been exported out um, this is the 5 prime UTR which contains a sequence that is recognized by the ribosomes to bind here and then they start traveling towards the 3 prime end and the ribosome detects the start codon for the translation. So the 5' prime UTR helps, in, helps the ribosomes bind to the mRNA molecule. The same way, uh, the 3' prime UTR, it contains uh, some sites which can be recognized by other factors which help in mRNA decay or its degradation. Uh, we will study the mRNA uh, degradation in details later. So there are several things which are found, there are several uh, sequences which are found here in the 3' prime UTR and they can, um, they can determine the life of the, the lifespan of the mRNA molecule. Uh, in addition, what is interesting that sometimes there are some, uh, uh, some, some uh, ORFs in the 5' prime UTR which can get translated into small uh, peptides but we will not go into the details for, uh, for this uh, topic um, so we would be exclusively talking about the uh, intron removal and joining together of the uh, exons the third type of uh, post transcription modification so most of the times um, the removal of the introns takes place once the, the, the pre-mRNA molecule has been transcribed I mean the, the, the transcription has already taken place but sometimes it can also where there are multiple exons are involved uh, this can also happen co-transcriptionally co it means the mRNA molecule as soon as it starts coming out of the uh, tr uh, the transcriptional complex the um, addition of the 5' prime caps takes place and because it, if, it, if it is a longer mRNA molecule then uh, the splicing can take place along with the transcriptional process. So both uh, transcription as well as RNA splicing, uh, they can take place at the same time. That's what we call co-transcriptional uh, RNA splicing. So RNA splicing is generally carried out by the spliceosomes. Um, let's look at it on the other slide. Uh, this is generally carried out by the spliceosomes. What are spliceosomes? They are complexes of proteins and generally they are made up of uh, uh, what we call SNRNPs, small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. These SNRNPs, uh, they are composed of, so this is an 
uh, as an RNP. So as the name indicates, it, can, it is composed of two things. One protein and the other one is snRNA, small nuclear RNA molecule. So these are proteins associated with RNA molecules. And these RNA molecules have specific uh, sequences and these sequences help this snRNP bind to the, uh, to the splice sites on the introns. And then there are general, uh, some, some other proteins. Um, different types of uh, factors, splicing factors. So uh, they're mixed together, uh, they bind together in order to constitute what we call spliceosome. So they're, one spliceosome would contain multiple of these SNRNPs and multiple of these other proteins. We will look at them, some of them, uh, in, the, uh, in one of the um, following slides. So uh, here's an example. What we see here uh, at the top is a, it's, it's a pre-mRNA molecule. It can, it's, this is the 5' end and somewhere here it has a 3' end. So exon 1, exon 2 and then in the middle it has got entron. So this is the entron that we need to remove. So in order to remove this entron, so um, in order to remove this entron, uh, Basically, this spliceosome, uh, this recognizes by SNRNPs, it recognizes certain sequences. And as you can see, that there's some sort of bonding between the uh, SNRNA of the SNRNP. So this is one SNRNP, this is the second one, this is the third, and this is the fourth one. So some of them, some of these SNRNP molecules that are helping the spliceosome recognize certain sequences on the introns here and here. So this is how the binding of the spliceosome to the intron takes place. And these sites, which are recognized by the SNRN, uh, SNRNPs, they can lie within the introns, they can lie sometimes even outside the introns. So, and sometimes even uh, inwards of the uh, introns, not right at the end of the intron. So that depends upon the type of the uh, genes or type of the mRNA molecules involved. So this whole spliceosome along with all these different proteins that it is made up of, it carries out the function of cutting this uh, intron and then removes this intron out of this complex. Not just removes the intron, it rather also puts the two exons together. So exon 1 and exon 2 are now joined together um, and they're released. So the complex the spliceosome, uh, its components, they are released from this complex and the intron that was removed that is also released from this complex. And the mRNA, which is a mature mRNA molecule now, is liberated from this uh, or is dissociated from this complex. Now this contains the coding sequences and the non-coding sequences, the introns, they have now been removed from the pre-mRNA molecule and we have constituted a mature mRNA molecule now. If you look at the composition of spliceosomes, as, uh, as I have mentioned previously, that it is generally composed of two things, uh, two entities, you can say proteins and RNA molecules. So among the proteins, we have got this. The most important ones are the, these SNRNPs. So SNRNPs are a combination of protein and an RNA molecule, an SNRNA molecule. SNRNA molecules are generally found inside the nucleus and they are involved in processing of the other RNA molecules. Like these ones are involved in the processing of mRNA molecules. If you look at uh, one uh, spliceosome, the size of the spliceosome or the, its weight is generally 12 megadalton. One dalton is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kg. And Mega stands for 1 million. So if this is uh, 12 mega Dalton, it means the spliceosome weighs 12 million Dalton. So that's the weight of this uh, spliceosome. And this spliceosome, as discussed previously, is made up of uh, SNRNPs and some other proteins. So it contains uh, five SNRNA molecules. Uh, roughly 3.3 megadalton in weight and 27% of the total mass of the 
of the of the splices on you you don't need to remember these numbers by heart but it's just um, for uh, for reference and for understanding how big this complex is um, it contains 41 different proteins in SNN peas uh, which um, make up 22 sorry which make up 2.2 mega Dalton of the total mass which is 18 percent of the total mass of the uh, spliceosome. There are 30, 30, 30 other proteins and there are 70 splicing factors. So uh, these are the splicing factors which constitute the uh, maximum portion of this spliceosome. 38 percent of the mass of the spliceosome are these splicing factors. So all these things together they constitute a spliceosome and this entire complex carries out the uh, removal of the intron molecules and putting together of the exons. So five uh, SNRNPs which are uh, most commonly involved in splicing and we will also look at the details of them. These are known as U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6. Let's talk about the types of uh, splicing as we have discussed previously uh, poly about the polyurylation that there were two types of um, Polyurylation. One was cytoplasmic polyurylation, uh, and uh, we also talked about the uh, about the um, I think yeah. So we talked about cytoplasmic polyurylation and alternative polyurylation. So uh, the same way, um, in case of splicing, we have we also have alternative splicing. Um, and we have trans splicing. So there are two types of uh, splicing, alternative splicing and trans splicing. We will discuss them one by one. Alternative splicing means uh, here, you ha here we have a normal scenario at the top. So that's what we call constitutive splicing. So the bars, the colored bars indicate the exon molecules. The black lines here, these indicate the intron molecules and the dotted lines here basically indicate the splice sites. So the, the, here in this case that would mean um, the, the, this end and this end would be spliced together means this intron. As I have previously told you that splicing means putting the two ends together. It's not, it doesn't mean cutting the things out. So if the link is made like this, if the dotted line connects the two ends of these bars the pink one and the bluish one so it means these two ends will be put together so these are the splice sites and the intron would be removed so that's the general scenario that the introns need to be removed out of this primary transcript so that these uh, exons can be put together so it means all the black lines all the introns will be will be kicked out and the colored bars would be put together in order to constitute a mature mRNA molecule that's the normal uh, standard um, uh, processing of the pre-mRNA pre molecules. But what happens that uh, um, some genes uh, they go for what we call alternative splicing events. What are alternative splicing events? Uh, certain genes uh, they can produce more than one type of uh, transcript what we call isoforms. So these different types of uh, transcripts can have different impacts. This alternative splicing can, uh, can change the lifespan of, a, of an mRNA molecule. This can uh, lead to, the, to a different function because you have a different, it leads to the formation of a different transcript. So you can have a different types of protein, we call them isoforms, and this protein can have a different function as compared to this uh, this transcript or this protein which results from the um, constitutive splicing of the mRNA molecules. So these proteins because there are different sequences, they are isoforms so proteins could also be different and uh, they, it can also change the uh, function of the proteins. Uh, second thing it can do, it can also affect the translation process. Third thing it can do, it can also affect the targeting of the proteins. They can be targeted to a different region. So um, alternative splicing can have multiple different effects. Uh, here are a few types of uh, alternative splicing events. Uh, we will talk about them one by one. Uh, first one is alternative donor. So in this case what happens is that the 5' end 
of the intron is changed the splicing site at the 5 prime end is changed so uh, rather than being cleaved here the intron is rather cleaved here that's what we call alternative donor so that was the normal uh, cleavage site for the intron so these are the uh, this is the 5 prime end of the intron and this is the 3 prime end of the intron so uh, what we see here is that uh, uh, one important thing the dotted lines at the top if you see a dotted line at the top that indicates a normal splicing event or a normal splicing region uh, what is made at the bottom so these are the altered or changed splicing events so altered uh, cleavage sites so uh, in case of alternative donors uh, the 5 prime end of the intron is changed and what happens when the 5 prime end of the intron is changed cleavage is going to take place here instead of here so that would cut out this portion of the intron and this portion would be left within the within the uh, within the mature mRNA molecule and will become a part of the coding sequence so that's what you call alternative donor where all the exons are put together except that in one case part of the intron also becomes trapped within these exon molecules and it becomes part of this mature transcript and would also get uh, translated uh, here's another scenario what we call alternative acceptor uh, this is uh, opposite to alternative donor in case of alternative donor the five prime uh, uh, the, the the five prime um, sequence of the MR, uh, of the intron was changed the five prime um, splice site while in case of uh, alternative acceptor the three prime splice site for this intron intron number two is changed so rather than being so that was the three prime end of the intron so rather than being cleaved here this splice site is now here within the next exon so what it does basically when this is cleaved out this intron also takes along part of this exon so part of the coding sequence is also gone is also also gets lost uh, during the splicing events so what we are left with is a truncated or a smaller mRNA molecule where the third exon, the uh, reddish one, this is comparatively shorter. So part of the coding sequence of this exon is now gone along with the second intron. Why? Because the um, three prime splice site for the intron was changed and this was found within the exon. So in this case, this can get removed and that's what we call um, alternative acceptor now another one we have is exon skipping so in case of exon sp skipping what happens that uh, if you look at the second uh, intron rather than having a five prime end uh, of uh, uh, splice site at the three prime end the three prime prime end now involves the the uh, the entire exon which is slightly different from the alternative acceptor because in case of uh, alternative acceptor the three prime splice site was changed from the end of intron to within the next exon so part of the exon was still outside of this uh, three prime splice site of this intron while in case of uh, exon skipping so this is the five prime splice site of this intron intron number two and in this case the three prime splice site changed from this uh, from this region all the way to the end of the next um, to the next intron so now in this case when this intron is spliced along with this intron so both of these two introns are when when, when they are removed they remove the entire third exon and we're left with first second and fourth exon so the entire exon is now gone so that's what we call exon skipping complete exon has been removed and the transcript now is composed of coding sequences from uh, three exons only and then we have intron retention as the name indicates that the in entire intron is retained uh, within the tra primary transcript because it doesn't have any uh, any splice sites here so the splicing events are taking place in intron number one and intron number two 
so this intron is removed this intron is removed so uh, first second and third these three first second and third these exons are joined together but because there is no splicing event taking place at the third intron the third intron becomes part of the mrna molecule or parts part of the um, of the transcript and this basically increases the uh, number of uh, nucleotides in the coding sequence and the entire intron is now left within the transcript and this is slightly different from alternative donor so these two are identical to each other but uh, there's slight difference that here part of the intron was left in there and here a complete intron is left in there and then we can compare alternative acceptor and exon skipping that in case of alternative acceptor part of the exon was exon number three was removed while in case of electron exon skipping the entire exon has been uh, removed here in these two sections alternative acceptor and exon skipping basically the coding sequence is being removed in these two cases the exon sequence is being removed while in case of alternative donor and intron retention there is addition of a sequence from the intron into the existing coding sequences so this these two processes this one and this one they shorten the transcripts while these two processes alternative donor and intron retention they lengthen the, uh, the, 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 the transcripts and then next type uh, the fifth type that is uh, uh, mutually exclusive exons so what does mutually exclusive exons means means there are two exons and they are mutually ex exclusive means if the blue one stays then the red one cannot stay if the red one stays in the transcript then the blue one cannot uh, stay in there that's what we call mutually exclusive uh, phenomenon that if one thing exists then the other cannot take place at these uh, at the same time if you remember from your cell biology class we were talking about the proliferation and differentiation so proliferation is is the increase in the number of cells and differentiation is the change in the phenotype of the cell so uh, and i told you that these two are mutually exclusive phenomena means uh, one of these two phenomenon can take place at any given time uh, if if the cells are undergoing proliferation they cannot differentiate and if they are differentiating then you need to stop proliferation that's what we call mutually exclusive phenomenon so in case of uh, a mutually mutually exclusive exons means if one exon exists then the other one doesn't if the other one does then the, this one doesn't so um, between the blue and the red one there's competition so the splice site for the first so in this case what happens that the splice site for the the three primes splice site for the intron for the first intron is changed if this one so that's the first scenario if this if the splice site for first intron the three prime end is changed and goes all the way to the end of the second intron then obviously during the cleavage pro process the entire blue exon will be skipped and we are left with the pink, red, and green uh, exons. While in another case, if the three prime uh, splice site for the second intron is changed, rather than being here, this is changed all the way to the end of the other intron. So basically, uh, uh, to the end of the other intron, then then the entire uh, red exon is skipped. And that's what and and this leads to the formation of the the primary transcript where the red one is missing and if you look at it again this looks identical to this one where we talked about the exon skipping so basically this is also exon skipping but uh, what is different in this case that uh, these two are exclusive only one of them can stay inside the transcript that's what we call mutually exclusive phenomenon otherwise it's pretty identical to exon skipping it's, uh, that the it's, it's, it's the same phenomenon that the uh, splice site at the three prime end is now uh, different which includes the entire the, the, the entire exon and the entire exon is skipped okay I think yeah so that's alternative splicing let's talk about the trans splicing now um, 
Transplicing basically means uh, the transcript is generated from uh, two mRNA, two primary mRNA molecules. So the final mRNA or the mature mRNA molecule is generated from two pre-mRNA molecules. And there are two types. Let's look at them one by one. Uh, intragenic transplicing and intragenic transplicing. So what happens in case of intragenic transplicing is basically there are two mRNA molecules are generated. So it's not shown here, but it is like in this case. But let's assume there were two mRNA molecules generated. One is here and the second one is here. So these are two mRNA molecules. So uh, part of the, so a few exons are taken from one mRNA molecule and few other are taken from the other mRNA molecule. So if you look at this, the, the green boxes, basically one mRNA molecule contains only one green exon exon number two. But here in the final transcript, you see this capping and this polyadenylation. In the final transcript, in the mature mRNA molecule, you see there are two green exons. So it means one is coming from one mRNA molecule and the second one is coming from the second mRNA molecule. Two mRNA molecules from the same gene. So two pre-mRNA molecules. So there's one pre-mRNA molecule and then the second pre-mRNA molecule, so part, a few exons from one mRNA molecule and few exons from the other mRNA molecule, they are joined together. So splicing is putting the exons from different pre-mRNA molecules together. And that leads to the formation of a mature mRNA molecule and that's what we call intragenic trans-splicing. Uh, the second type is intragenic trans-splicing. So intragenic trans splicing means that the exons are coding sequences are basically coming from two different genes. So they are put together. So gene A transcribes its own mRNA molecule. Gene B also transcribes, uh, transcribes its mRNA molecule. So now we have two mRNA molecules but they are not identical. They are different from each other because they are products of two different genes. So uh, as you can see one exon has been taken from gene A and three exons have been taken from gene B and they have been put together to constitute a different type of, type of mRNA molecule. So uh, this is what we call intragenic trans splicing. So uh, what is the reason why do we have these uh, alternative splicing and trans splicing events? Uh, they're advantageous in, in a sense that a smaller amount of DNA can lead to the formation of a large number of antibodies, molecules. Because you can, in case of one coding sequence, you can cut it into different ways. You can splice it at different sites and you can come over with, uh, with different types of transcripts which lead to the formation of different types of proteins. So that only happens during your uh, antibody production. We do not have like thousands of genes for producing antibodies against all the different uh, uh, pathogens, hundreds of thousands of pathogens that we come across every day and they have got different types of peptides on their surfaces and we produce thousands of different types of antibodies against them and each antibody is very particular against, uh, is very specific against a specific uh, antigen. So how do we do this? We do not have so many genes in our bodies that they are producing thousands of hundreds of thousands of different types of antibodies. It rather, rather takes place because of events like alternative splicing or trans splicing that we end up producing different types of uh, a large number of uh, antibodies. So a small number of genes like one gene in case of alternative splicing can lead to the formation of different types of mRNA molecules and hence different types of proteins and can perform different types of which can then perform different types of functions. So a smaller uh, amount of DNA leads to the formation of a larger number of protein molecules and we can carry out different functions from the product of one gene. And the same is true here uh, for trans splicing. Even if we talk about the same gene where different types of exon molecules are put together. So exon number one, exon number two and exon number four can be put together from the same mRNA molecule. Uh, they can be put together from two different uh, genes in case of trans splicing. So where we can even enlarge the number of 
exons. We, we, we can increase the number of exons. So the mRNA molecule now has got uh, a coding sequence which is, uh, which, which, which is longer than the coding sequence of its gene. So here we can uh, play with it and we can produce multiple different types of uh, mRNA molecules which would lead to the formation of different types of proteins. And then we have got inter, inter, uh, intergenic uh, trans uh, splicing where we can take like exon number one from here and these three exons from gene B. In another scenario, we can take exon number two from here and maybe four genes from here. In another scenario, we can take these two exons from gene B and these two exons from gene A. In another scenario, we can take the last exon from gene B and we can take these three exons from gene A. And this is how we can produce multiple different types of mRNA molecules from only two genes. And these multiple uh, types of or several uh, these multiple types of uh, mRNA molecules can lead to the formation of uh, several different types of uh, proteins which can perform different types of functions. Uh, so I think that's sufficient for today. I hope you got everything. We talked about the RNA splicing. We talked about the let me go quickly go through it. We talked about RNA splicing. What is RNA splicing? We talk about the composition of uh, uh, spliceosomes and how do they uh, carry out uh, splicing events. We talked about two types of uh, RNA splicing. One was alternative splicing and the second one was trans splicing. We also talk about the um, we also talked about the about the about why 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 does this say, take place and what is the advantage of having events like alternative splicing or uh, trans splicing. So I think that is sufficient for today. So if you have any questions you can post your questions in Google Classroom. Thank you very much for your attention.